You all right? How you doing? All right, cool. Right, you can see in front here, the 48 and the 32. The one on the left, 48, obviously. The one on the right, 32. Just finished the 32. And as usual, I like to do a post build review. And you know what? I just thought, I've built eight of these 48s and I've built three of these 32s and it'll be interesting to sort of narrate how they compare. So, here we go. Now, you might be in the market to build a tornado and you think, which one of these am I going to get? There's loads available. There's the big Italieri one that's new, but it costs a bomb. If you want to get a tornado in 32, but go down price, you get this one, the Revel one. But then again, there's an Italieri 48 and there's the Revel 48s as well. Uh, and I'm sure that there's many, many more to choose from. But as it happens, the ones that you can see in front of you, they're both Revel level 5 kits. What I'm going to do is, because I've built them both, I feel I'm in a position where I can talk through both kits and tell you ups and downs and which is best and, you know, what, what to look for kind of thing. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to put myself a little point scoring system here, right? Just so that I can keep track. So I've got a little bit of paper and uh, I want to talk you through it uh, and you can then decide, you know, which one is best for you. Now, a lot of it is money orientated. Uh, that's obviously a factor and space as well, because the 48 is minute in comparison to this massive bird. Uh, and a lot of guys they haven't got space to build a but, well, they've got space to build it, but they haven't got space to store a 32. So there's loads and loads of different factors that you've got to sort of think about, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to surmise that you've got sort of 40 quid to spend. Uh, 40 quid will definitely buy you a, 20, uh, a 48 scale uh, because they're about 25 quid. Uh, Jadlam do them for 25 quid. Uh, and they also do this 32, it's the Desert Storm one actually, that that I've converted, it's just a different paint scheme and different decals and you can get that for about 40 quid I think, 38, 99 or something. So there's not a great deal of price difference, but the difference in build, the difference in enjoyment and quality of the kits uh, can be swaying you one way or other. So let's start at front end so front end on your 48 your nose cone that's fixed on that's a solid cone and the pitted tube at the front is it's not great okay uh bearing in mind that there are aftermarket ones available they're not expensive and if i were going to build a 48 again i would definitely go for the aftermarket pitted Whereas on the 32, it's a bigger pitter, it fits better, etc., etc. The nose you can see there is open. So, as far as that very front end is concerned, right, I'm going to write it down point at 32. Next point is for just at back of that again, you can see radar open option. And when you close the nose on the 32, it does fit pretty nicely. In fact, it fits equally as good as the 48. And because you've got radar open option point to the 32. Moving back, we're going to stay on top. Canopy uh, point to the 48 because you get the internal locking mechanism, which I do know that a few builders leave off because as if you read instructions, it's like, well, where does that go? Is that upside down? Are the numbered wrong? Is it on back to front? Does that point up? Does that bit point that? It can be a little bit sort of like, yeah. but it's there, it's in the kit. So as far as that's concerned, 48 gets a point. 
the window brace that you can see the one on the 32 comes in the kit the one on the 48 the little red and white one there that's just a little piece of rod that i had to sort of manufacture not difficult but you do get it in the 32 kit and it's the proper size the proper shape everything's good about it 32 point let's go into office office on your 48 let me just have a little look it's not too bad you get molded in seat belts you get decals uh, you obviously get the stick and you know it, it's all right it can detail up average for a 148 bird however the 32 scale office is more detailed better decals more parts for your seats the fit is better the decals are better it's better okay as far as points concerned the 32 gets it just on the other side of that uh, you can probably just see it at the top of the radar there you can see the boom arm because on the 32 you get boom arm uh, in the open position if you want you can also have it closed on the 48 scale it's molded in you do have to fit it if i remember yeah you do you have to fit it you have to drill your holes from outside but basically it's fit and it's in closed position you know i if you watch my videos previously i've said if it's in the kit if it's a feature it's going on whether it's in the air static whatever I, i'm having it okay because that's what i'm paying for i want to exploit every little bit of plastic that i possibly can i want to get my money's worth i want to get value for money so because that boom arm for refueling is open option on your 32 point air intakes the air intakes on the 48 are i want to say this in the best possible way a nightmare and we all know it and if you've built it before you know you know what i'm on about now i have butchered my process so dramatically on building the air intakes after watching greg's videos uh and, and countless others that now i don't even follow the instructions when i build a 48 air intake i completely do it differently uh because it, it's just so difficult to do and misaligned parts and having to put shims of plastic in and one thing or another a, a real a real test of skill let's go across to 32 bingo absolutely nailed it uh literally one two parts uh a, a, a couple of uh, little sort of like intake doors on inside uh, and I think some kind of strut as well that you sit in the middle that you don't get on the 48. As far as intakes are concerned, 32 point. Main body then, let's start up at the top. So let's go with detail first. So the detail on the 48 is clean and crisp and well recessed same is for the 32 however under the wing glove on the 48 bird all that detail and under the back end is perfectly there it's great the detail under the wing glove on the 32 has faded it's not just my kit that's faded if you've got this desert storm bird in your stash you can go and have a look obviously and you will see that the nice panel lines and what have you that you've got on top on the body and the wings great you have a look under where wing gloves are faded to literally nothing doesn't take a wash it's just a bare panel okay so as far as the actual body is concerned there 48 point let's go with at the front uh sorry where the wings join on so not the wing gloves but uh it's where the wings slot in the 48 bird is a two three section approach 
Uh, it's an upper, a lower, and then there's another tiny little slither of plastic to put underneath the front. And that is usually covered in flash and it's ill-fitting. Whereas on the 32 bird, it's actually molded into the actual airframe itself. There is no upper and lower part. It's just dead, dead easy to fit. I've even seen people on the 48 bird butcher the wing mechanism on inside so that the wings can slot in separately. It's that bad. Whereas again, on the 32, no drama. Point. Wing sweep. The wing sweep mechanism on the 48 bird can be complicated and what doesn't help is that some of the parts are labeled incorrectly in the instruction manual and one part is for one side and one part is for the other and if you follow the instructions you can get it wrong the wing sweep mechanism on the four on the 32 bird is a lot less complicated but you need three hands to do it so mm, tie no points each. Pylon system. The pylon system on the 48 bird is a piece of plastic with three sort of eyelet holes in it that uh, control the pylons when the wings sweep. And I have done that and it does work. You do not get that on the 32 bird. The pylons on the 48 you push them in from under the wing and it is complicated. You do need three hands to do it. It can be tricky, but the 32 pylons, it's literally a peg on top of the pylon that pushes into a hole and is held inside the wing with a C clip, which is absolutely rubbish. And it really is rubbish because it, they don't last at all which inevitably means that you do have to glue your pylons in situ, which takes away the swing wing mechanism because obviously the pylons don't move when you sweep the wings. As hard as it is for me to say, and as complicated as it is, point was at 48. Staying on top, the 48 tail does not meet the spine. Uh, it just doesn't there's always about half a millimeter gap there and again I have built eight of these so I don't know what I'm talking about and you always have to fill and sand and not too bad I suppose fair enough but there's a lot of recessed detail around that area and it's dead easy to sand that off the tail to spine fit on the 32 bird is less than 0.1 of a millimeter and I did not need any filler in that however I did need a tiny tiny dab of sprue goo just to sort of make sure that it were a tight join but tail to spine 32 bird air brakes the air brakes on the 48 kit, you've got to put the air brake housing in yourself from underneath. And all that back end can be a little bit tricky. The air brake housing on the 32 is molded into the upper fuselage. So you don't have to do any work with that. Hmm, tough one. Point goes to the 32 because at the end of the day, you know, it's nice to have a challenging kit but we all know that some kits can be over-engineered and that is one of them. Wings. On the 48 bird, one of the things that I love about that particular kit is front slats can be in lower position and then you've got a little bit of a break and then your flaps, which is one, two, three, maybe four lengths of plastic they are so brittle they are dead easy to cut in the wrong place they are easy to knacker up they are difficult to locate on the finished product they are an absolute nightmare 
which is why I love it so much because it's a challenge every time I build one of them babies. Whereas the flaps and slats on the 32 bird, they're all molded in to the wing. So there's no positioning of anything. It's just fully closed. Now, where does the point go? Well, the point's got to go to the 48 because even though you might build the 48 with everything closed, it's still an option to have it open. And again, option open, it's one of the things that's gonna get a point. Let's go to reverse buckets. On the 48 bird, again, as complicated as it is and as difficult it is, it's optional to have the air brakes deployed. And I've built eight tornadoes in one 48 scale from Revel and five of them have got air brakes, uh, reverse thrusters, sorry, open because first couple that I did, I had a go and then thought, sod that. Then I actually had a go and sort of, you know, butchered it a little bit, but managed to get there. But then come the fourth one that I built, I took a breath, I took my time, I didn't rush it and I nailed it. And then subsequently after that, I've nailed every single one. Because at the end of the day, you practice at something and you do get better, all right? So the point goes to the 48, as difficult as it is. The, let me have a think, the horizontal stabilizers at the back. Uh, the point goes to the 32 because on the 48 it's a really tricky it's over engineered right it's as simple as that it's a really tricky little fiddly thing to get to right because the just in front of the exhaust cans on the 48 scale you've got two uh, pieces of plastic that when you join them together they look like a figure of eight they look like the number eight on the side and the, the fit on that is appalling. And then you've got to try and get the bar all the way through. It's just, yeah, it's not good. It's not great. Uh, they're not, I don't think they're joined, they're not joined. Whereas the ones on the 32, they're joined by a rod uh, and it's just a lot easier to assemble point. What else have we got? Let's come forward underneath. The detail underneath uh, is crisp and clean on the 48. It's not too bad on the 32. Point 48. Right, what else have we got? We've got undercarriage. Let's go undercarriage. Main undercarriage on the 48. Lots of little parts, carpet fodder, difficult to assemble, dead easy to get wrong. Uh, that's the rear undercarriage. And then the front undercarriage is not too bad. However, on the 32 bird, a lot easier to assemble, a lot less likely to get that wrong. Bigger surface area means that you can detail it better front undercarriage is a lot stronger and you've got flat spots on your tires for the weight weighted tires 32 point. uh what else have we got pylon sister belly rails uh, a point a piece so that voids each other out because they're just a simple affair aerials on the top they're all okay Right, okay, let's move on to the inside of the plastic then. The 48 Tornado is absolutely wrought with flash and ejector pin marks and shrouds of plastic to the point where there's enough flash inside those wings, body halves and everything else that you could literally make another bleeding kit with it. There's so much flash. On the 32 bird, do you know what? None. 
I didn't have to cut one little bit of shroud of plastic off, not one. Uh, literally, not one. Point to 32. And then, all your attachments then, again, you know, you've got to have childlike fingers to do the 48 because the aerials and antennas, they are absolutely tiny. The clear parts, the lights uh, that go on side at fuselage uh, on your air intakes, the tiny, the lights that go on the back of the upper antenna at the back of the tail, tiny, the wing edge lights uh, for your reds and greens, tiny, uh, easily lost. All your attachments on your 48 bird are obviously in 48 scale and they are tiny. Whereas attachments on your 32 bird, because it's bigger, you've got bigger antenna, bigger clear parts, etc, etc. And it actually does feel like you've got all of something in your hand. Point cut 32. And then price. So, like I said, you pay about 25 quid for one in 48, and you pay about 40, 35, 40 quid for your 32. So, really, there's only like 10, 15 pound difference. It's not that much. However, if you want to build a kit that is all right uh, and is adequate on detail, the 32 bird is pretty cool. But if you want uber detail with lots and lots of tricky little features that you've got to conquer, but looks absolutely superb when you've finished it, the 48 one is the way to go. The points, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six points on 48, six really positive points. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I've got 14 good points good points on the 32 bird i'll put that down now it's just a shame that all the features that you get on a 48 which is open position buckets slats flaps etc etc if they were available on this 40 on this 32 revel kit it would be their flagship kit it would be absolutely fantastic and let's be honest that's what italia area have done They've got this 32 bird and everything that's closed on it, they've said, we'll just open all that up and punt it out for 120 quid. Bob's your auntie, Fanny's your aunt. Or something like that. Uh, as far as value family is concerned, if you want a tricky kit that looks great, 48 bird. If you want radar open and you know you're not bothered about losing that little bit of detail under the wing gloves and you want a big meaty tornado 32 bird uh both equally good both equally bad i've not built the new italieri one uh, but i'm hoping to do so in the future okay a couple of shout outs before i go uh guys that i subscribe to zte works uh, he's my favourite tank builder, that's Zach in Texas, in America. Uh, a shout out to him, uh, love him to bits, he's uh, what an absolute star. Uh, and I also want to say uh, thanks to Bart Sharp uh, for supplying me with uh, my kit uh, and to Jadlam Racing uh, Toys and Models for supplying me with the kits that I build. I'm saying supply. I do actually buy him, you know, all right? I don't get my stuff for free, all right? Uh, Gary at Coastal Kits that displays, uh, gets my display bases. Uh, thanks a lot for those, mate, everything that you've done in the past. Okay, that just about sums it up. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video and take out of it what you will. Stay safe, catch you later.